All right, guys. So uh, first up, it's gonna be go ahead and get your uh, crank socket put on there. I use the the uh, crank position sensor uh, wheel down there to give me a little spacer to clear this water pump. But you can use whatever you got there to space it out just a tad bit to clear this water pump. Put your uh, your wheel on there. Go ahead and tighten down this so it's you know it's steady doesn't move get your pointer like I said I just used a coat hanger that I bent I need some kind of pointer like that I just bent a coat hanger and, and fixed it to the where the alternator goes okay and you're gonna take yourself your piston stop okay you're gonna go ahead and stick it down in the number one cylinder which is the front passenger side bank and go ahead and uh Tighten it down until it stops. You can do it hand tight. You don't need to torque it or nothing. Just go ahead and thread her in until she stops. Okay. And what you're gonna do? Is you're gonna go to the number six cylinder exhaust. Okay. So that's gonna be the driver's side, second cylinder back. It's a four valve motor, so you got two valves here. That'd be number cylinder number five. Come back two more. That's cylinder number six. Intake, and the exhaust, exhaust side. Take your plate, mount it up, and get your dial indicator with your extension set up so that it's pushing on a number six exhaust retainer. Okay, go ahead and sit that up on there. And what you're gonna do first is you got to find top dead center, actual top dead center. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna spin the motor over. Until it hits the piston stop. You're gonna record the number that your pointer's at. Then you're gonna spin it counterclockwise all the way until it hits the piston stop. Record the number. Then you take them, them two numbers that you just got, add them together, divide it by two. That'll give you a number. That number is actual top dead center. So you're gonna spin this over until you get to that number. Unlock the wheel. Turn just the wheel, don't turn the motor, just turn the, the this wheel here to zero. So that your pointer is pointing at zero, then lock the wheel down. That's zero is your actual top dead center. And then we'll continue on. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so I'm gonna spin it around clockwise till I uh, hit my piston stop. <coughs> I hit it right there. So we look at our thing. I'm at 41. So we need to write down 41. Now we'll go counterclockwise until it comes to the stop. Okay, stop there. And it's one. We'll go ahead and write that down. So our two numbers are 41 and one. We add them together, give us 42. We divide that by two, and that's 21. So we'll spin the motor, 21. And that'll give us top dead center. Okay, that's top dead center number one. We'll go ahead and unlock the wheel, rotate it till my pointer is at zero. Lock the wheel back down. Make sure you 
you're looking at it straight on. Okay, let's tap that center number one. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna watch your dial indicator over here. You're gonna spin it clockwise until you get max lift. So watch your dial indicator, it's gonna start spinning. Keep turning it until the dial indicator stops spinning. Okay, when it stops spinning, go ahead and uh, zero the dial indicator. Turn it backwards, counterclockwise, until you go past 50. So go past 50, you know, get to like 75, stop. Okay. back to 50. Okay, that's 50. We're going to write this number down. I got, let's see, 170, it's like 173 and a half. So you write that number down. Okay, go clockwise. It's going to go to zero. It's going to stop. It's going to come back the other way. Go again until it comes back to 50. Perfect 50. Read your, read your number. I have 110, 11, 112. So I have 112. Write that number down. Go ahead and add them two numbers up. And divide them by two. All right, guys. So this is how I got it set up. I got the plate that comes in the kit bolted to the cam cap. Got my magnetic base dial indicator set up, affixed to that, and then the second cylinder back on the passenger, or excuse me, on the driver's side would be number six. I'm doing the number six exhaust for the exhaust cam on this side. So you go back to the number six cylinder. You can pick either lobe; it don't matter. And uh, let me see if I can turn some light on. Let's see if I can get it to not shine on you too bad. Anyways, you want it to stick down on that uh, spring retainer, okay? So now that we had our, we had this set as zeros top dead center. I spun it around. Okay, until the springs all the way open, the valves all the way open. So you'll spin it, you'll spin the motor around by the crank, okay? And this will start to spin, and it'll keep spinning, then eventually it'll stop. Wherever it stops at, go ahead and adjust the dial indicator so that reads zero, okay? So that's max lift. Uh, that's zero now, okay? And you go ahead and spin the engine counterclockwise until you go past 50. And uh, let me take this light off so it don't blind you. And then you come back to 50, okay? So I came back to 50. Then you're going to look at what you're, you're marked here. So if I read it, we're at 149, okay? So let's come over here down to your pad or paper or whatever and write down uh, 149 okay then you're gonna go turn the motor clockwise Let's see if I can do this one-handed guys I'll try you're gonna spin the motor clockwise Okay, so go to zero, and then stop and come back. Okay, and when it comes back, you're gonna stop at 50 again. So get it right at 50. You want it perfect, so nudge it just a hair. So 
right on 50. Now you come and read your read your thing. So what do we got? We got 71, 72. I'm gonna call that uh 72 and a half. So 72.5. So you come here, write down uh 72.5. And what you're going to do is you're going to add these up and divide that number by two. If you looked here, I added them. 149, 72 and a half, gave me 221. 221 and a half divided by two, it gave me 110. So right now I got it installed on a 110, almost 111 intake center line. Or exhaust center line it would be on this one. Um, and I want to be at 106, so I got a little ways to go. So... Uh, so I gotta adjust it. So we'll come back to that. All right. So I got my first number. I'm at 50 there. Thousands lift after uh, getting uh, let's see 76. Okay. I'm gonna spin it around. It's gonna go to zero and stop. Back to 50. I mean, we're going to stop at 50 here. Sorry, I'm shaking you guys. Got you mounted on the engine here. Okay. It's 151. We'll go ahead and... Uh, Divided by two, and that'll give us our uh, intake center line on the driver's, or, yeah, driver's side head. That's 113 and a half, which isn't gonna work. We gotta <clears throat> figure out something there. All right, guys. So I uh, set the intake on the motor, and uh, here's a little shot of it. So you get an idea of what it looks like. I think it looks pretty slick. Um, and this is a Solvin lower intake with their fuel rails, Holly EFI elbow, and a 90 millimeter AccuFab throttle body. So uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty slick. Let's see if I can get you a little side shot action. Uh, got the headers and oil pan back on it, uh, valve covers on it, coil sitting in there, and uh, yeah, so at this point, I need, there's a couple little things I need to do, still got a few things I need to do in the engine compartment, clean up a couple things um, before I can get the transmission and converter put in or uh, bolted to the motor and then I can set the motor in the engine in the engine bay there so um, I still have to get the pilot bearing out of uh, uh, you know the back of the crankshaft from when it was a manual transmission car and uh, and we'll be ready to bolt it in and throw it in the car but thought I'd give you guys a little picture of what it looked like it's gonna be close I may have to get a, a spacer a 4150 carb spacer to move that that elbow up you know an inch or so to give me clearance for that alternator um, or you know they make brackets to mount the alternator where the AC compressor used to be and that'll get me some, the clearance that I need up here so we'll have to decide what to do there but you know either either a we'll leave it there or we'll have to move it all right, guys, so a uh, couple things to update you on. I ordered a set of uh, Bosch 210, 210-pound per hour injectors to replace the 95-pound uh, or 1,000cc injectors that we had. Uh, our duty cycle was already pretty high, um, you know, just on 15 pounds of boost, so uh, figured we'd go ahead and upgrade that to give us a little cushion. That way we aren't pushing the limits of them injectors. And uh, so we got them coming. Uh, we also 
the uh, decided to get the manual brake conversion, power steering delete, to get rid of the hydro boost, to get me some room over there, um, get rid of all the lines, pressure lines coming from the hydro boost to the pump, get rid of the, work, the power steering reservoir, all the hose related to that. Um, so yeah, that'll clean up the engine bay a little bit, which is nice. Um, you know, all the room you can get with these super wide mod motors um, is a blessing. So also got a uh, a uh, Motion Race Works uh, CO2 dome pressure kit. Um, that way we can control dome pressure with the CO2. Um, super accurate, fast. Um, and it's precise, you know, you're, you're not lagging behind with uh, using boost pressure to do it, manifold pressure, so we got that. I also ordered new waste gates. I got, I had China gates on it, and I had problems with them when they were brand new. I took them apart, cleaned them up, greased them, and uh, they've been okay. I still got had a little bit of boost creep with them. And uh, so I decided to not stick with them anymore and just get good name brand uh, wastegates. So I ordered two JGS 40 millimeter wastegates um, to replace them with. So we should have, you know, precise boost control without any issues. We got good wastegates and we got CO2 boost control. So we should be good in it in that department. Also got an, a radiator, a aluminum three inch core dual pass radiator to replace the stock one. Uh, last year, uh, for the most part, the car was fine. It wouldn't overheat, didn't really have an issue. But one time last year, it was like mid to upper 90s, and it was humid out, muggy. And the car, it didn't overheat, but it ran hot. It ran hotter than I want, wanted it to run. You know, it was pushing 215, 220, and, you know, that's that's too high for for uh, what I'm wanting. So, uh, you know, it the stock radiator was doing okay, but uh, I got a pretty good deal on a uh, three-inch core dual past aluminum radiator, so I went ahead and picked it up. Figured, uh, you know, we're so close to getting this thing done, so I I wanted to throw some money into the car to help my dad out, so we can get this thing going because, um, you know, uh, so, some of the stuff isn't ne necessary. We didn't have to have it, but you know, uh, it would make things easier, more reliable, um, and faster you know, to, uh, to get them on there. So that's, that's what we ended up doing. So, uh, what else we got? I got a throttle, a Mavin performance throttle bracket. So I got a Mavin performance throttle bracket, which is a super nice bracket for a 4150 square bore flange. It'll go here and here and it'll come out and you can run your bracket or your throttle cable either this side or obviously will be on the other side for ours but it can bolt on either side it's adjustable has a lot of adjustment in it so you can get it just right to get the tension on the cable correct and uh so we'll be good to go there um i also got in the these guys right here these are the sumo tumo or uh the Bosch 210 injectors come in multiple different styles of connect. Uh, you can get them EV1, EV6, the Sumo Tumo, and there might even be one more different style. Um, the Sumo Tumo are the most reliable of the bunch. People are having some people are having issues with the EV6 style 210 Bosch injectors. Um, the guy I got them from recommended going with the Sumo Tumo type. They've had the best luck with them. Uh, so that's what I went. So these are the connectors, the pins, and the seals uh, to wire them in. So I'll go ahead and and cut the old ones off and uh, wire in, crimp on the pins and wire them in for the new connectors. So we got to do that still. Um, I've wrapped some more of the harness. It's starting to get cleaned up. Uh, but them four-port boost solenoids uh, got to go. On the CO2 control, they recommend using three ports, so I had to get a couple three-port solenoids. So the dual four-port solenoids are coming off, and they'll be for sale if anybody's interested in them. Um, I'll give you a pretty good deal on them. Got the uh, Hydro Boost removed. Um, when my brake conversion kit gets here, 
I'll install that and uh, the adapter plate and remove that master cylinder because I'm going in with a different master cylinder. Um, and at that time, we'll take that, we'll remove that uh, proportioning valve right there where the lines are. That's a proportioning valve. I'm deleting the stock one and going to an aftermarket one that's adjustable. And when I get that all out, I'll be able to paint over there. I couldn't really get in there because of all the lines and the brake booster and everything that was over there was just jam-packed. So I could paint all this stuff over here now. So, But it cleaned up quite well over there. All them power steering lines, reservoir, mounts, all that shit's gone over there. Um, I got the old China gate off on that side along with the four port removed. Um, I still got to do this side over here, but we'll get to that. But uh, I wanted to show you guys this. If you're changing connectors, if you got to uh, install a connector or whatever, um, you know, you can get connectors with pigtails on them, which is uh, basically the connector that's already wired. And it has a, you know, a five or six inch wire coming out of the leads that you can splice in, solder in, or crimp in a, a connection. And them are okay, but they kind of make the harness look not the greatest but if you're confident in your wiring you can do it like these they sell uh i guess i can show it up here they sell kits so at the top there you can see the connector itself the connector body and then them orange or red things there are the uh the seals for the connector and then these are the pins for the connector and uh you get yourself the proper crimper and then you can install these right on there and then you don't have any connections no solder connections no uh, you know crimp connections but connectors all that shit none of that stuff you don't have to have and it'll be clean so you can see the black connector there that's the original that i'm replacing and then here's one of the uh ones i just did so there you go all good ready to go and uh, it's the same exact length as it was before, so I don't lose any of that. I don't have any extra length to deal with and all that stuff. So first thing you do is, uh, let's see if I get this camera to focus. It ain't going to stay focused, is it? Yeah. Let's see if it'll focus. I doubt it. Anyways, you slide the seal over the wire. And then you crimp on your connection. So I'll try to show you that if I can get the, the camera positioned. Okay, so I got the seals on the wire. Go ahead and take you one of the crimp connectors. And uh, this is 18 gauge wire. So you look on your, your tool here. You know, it has different gauges. You know, the top one's 16 to 14 gauge, 20 to 18 or whatever. So look for your, your size wire. I got... 18 gauge so I'm gonna go for that slot so uh, I'll go ahead put my connector in the correct slot okay take your wire slide it in crimp nice little squeeze crimps it on and then there you go now this back portion right here where the seal is you want that back little collar there around the seal so then you can come in after you crimped it see if I can get it so you can see go ahead and uh, you put it in your crimping tool and just squeeze it down and if you see it crimps the seal on with this connector so the seal ain't gonna move okay and then you grab your connector slide your pin let me make sure I got the right side up I need a connector towards it or the snap towards the top I'll go ahead and slide it in Okay, and you just push it in and you'll hear it click. Once you got it in right. There you go, you hear it snap. 
There you go. So let me back out. So if you look down in there, if I can get this other one. You got it in there, you got the seal in there. See this one right here? Seal's in there. Pins in there, nice and clean, okay? So go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a few more of these and then we'll come back.